Hey there guys, it's Ian here. I know it's been quite a long time since my last video, but a lot's been happening. Um, since finishing uni, I've now got a job. Pretty cool. Um, making adverts for TV and cinema and stuff. Um, but I'll always try and find time to do this. And today I just want to show one of the coolest techniques um, for Cinema 4D compositing, um, which I found out at work, and it's crazy how useful it is and how many projects you can benefit um, using this technique. So it's all about depth of field and how to get a perfect uh, depth of field map, which um, a lot of people may have struggled with in the past, so I'm going to go over it. Uh, from start to finish and show you how to do all the depth of field perfectly in After Effects. So this is a scene I'm going to be using but before we jump into anything like this um, I'm going to make a new file and demonstrate using a cube in a cloner and we're just going to offset these and make a few more. So now we have the basic depth of field test and we're just going to shrink these cubes down so we can see them a bit more so in the past a lot of people um, will have set up a camera um, looked through, through it and gone I want to focus on say um, this cube in the middle and when you go out the camera you can see that focus distance is now on there and to get your depth of field, you would have one map before and one map after. Then in render settings, in your multipass with depth included, you would pretty much say that's that. Click render and you would have a depth map, which works. This works. This is how you get um, the depth. Um, into it but the issue is this is now baked in and so if you wanted to focus on the first cube here uh, due to the way the lighting um, of the depth map works this back one would also be in focus because it chooses um, different shades um, from white to black um, and you select what um, colour you want in focus and anything of that colour will do that so to get from white to black start to finish you would get rid of the front map bring the focus distance down to zero and make sure that everything is included within this uh, space here so now if we do a render you can see we've got um, dark gray at the front and it's going towards white so obviously having an infinite space in the background um, it will be white all around I can throw in a floor and re-render and so now you can see the floor is as well um, in the foreground we would have um, dark uh, going towards black and in the background we have going towards white um, and this works as well this is essentially how I've been doing it for the past year or so and if you want to do it this way still you can but I'm going to show you the ultimate technique so we're going to go back to my other scene here and I'm just going to turn off the cloner and we can visualize everything with these this nice little plane here. Um, I'm going to go out my camera so you can see the scene actually moves around a lot faster than if I have my cubes. I haven't touched this camera, it's still set to the default, we have nothing on the front or the back. Um, we can focus it all if we want, but we don't need to. Um, I'm going to set this so it's roughly where my object is, but I haven't played around with it a huge amount. Um, I know you don't really need to do this, but I'm curious as to if it makes a difference or not. So we're going to look through the camera, and this is it. Um, I haven't even got multipass turned on. Um, I've been doing some tests uh, with previous ones, and um, I'm 
haven't needed it. So this is the scene that I want and what I'm going to do is save um, and I'm just going to save the main file. The important thing is this format which is RPF. You can find it down here with all the other ones and you can go to options and you can see here what you can bring in. And so I don't need the normals or colour or any of that. Maybe I do. Maybe I will need colour. Um, I'm going to bring in colour. Could work, might not. But the important thing is this Z at the top, which is essentially your Z space or Z depth. And we're going to click OK. And from this, all I need to do is click Render, which I have already done. So I won't save it, but I'll show you kind of what we're getting. So pretty simple scene. It's literally a bunch of cubes with an effector to bring out. Um, this top bit here and you can see that under here and it's quite cool uh, very simple very easy one texture on everything and three lights um, with no shadows and we get this pretty cool image which I'm just gonna stop it takes about a minute and I don't really need to do that so now that we got this we have one file and we're going to jump straight into After Effects with this one file, which is crazy. Remember, I haven't set up any sort of front or back. Um, so you can see I did a couple of tests. But what we want is this main file dot rpf. It's quite a large file, so image sequences are big. Um, you got to take that into consideration. Um, but that's not really a problem. So we're going to create a new composition and I'm going to name this composition depth because when you're working with depth maps um, a lot of plugins like um, the camera motion blur and um, Frisch Lift, which I'll be using likes to work with pre-comps rather than um, a single image especially when you're throwing effects onto it it just reads it a lot better. So what we're going to do is, with our main file selected, just right click 3D channel, 3D channel extract, and everything's gone grey. So we're going to zero uh, these out, and look at this. I can pull in um, a depth map um, by selecting where the white and black points of my scene are. So I can create a depth map and change it uh, with keyframes um, however I want. So I could have something like this. No, I can't because that's exactly the same. Um, like this. And now we've got a moving depth map. And we can change that for everything. So that is pretty incredible. I'm going to stick that to minus 120 and so now you can see you can tune in where the black point starts, where the white point is and everything in between and so we've got this crazy depth map which is absolutely perfect for what we need and remember this is still one file so I'm going to drag the same one into a new composition and you can see we have all our data in here. I'll, s I'll show you what um, the other channels um, have given us. So we actually have um, a normals, so anyone who does all their normals in After Effects rather than rendering them out in Cinema, you can actually do that here. Uh, it's not something I really do. Uh, we have the UV maps for all the textures, so you could actually retexture stuff inside of After Effects as well, but we don't need any of that, we just need the raw image and in the same composition I'm going to drag in our depth map so that goes underneath and then we're going to create a new adjustment layer go to the FL depth of field plugin and here we can um, use our depth map and crank up the radius and focus it where we want and look at that instant depth of field 
completely um, you can choose exactly where it focuses and I just rendered out one image and it works just perfectly this is unbelievably powerful um, the fact that you don't need to set anything up in cinema you can see on my camera we don't have anything in the front or rear blur um, nothing like that at all um, changing the focus distance hasn't actually affected it at all uh, it's still exactly the same I believe um, all you have to do is play around with the black and white point values takes a bit of getting used to um, you might think that it's not there somewhere but you can create like it's just so powerful like it looks like I'm kind of cocking up but you can see there you can just tune in exactly how you want it and you go back and it just works absolutely perfectly then you can just do whatever you want you can add um, effects over everything so it can be exactly how you want and it'll look stunning every time it works a lot better than rendering out a PNG sequence for depth maps because um, the anti-aliasing is a lot nicer and yeah I couldn't recommend this more I use it now for almost all of my projects and it's the biggest time saver I've encountered so far and there you go that is Ian's biggest tip for compositing in Cinema 4D for quite a long time um, if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to leave a comment below remember to leave a like on the video if this has helped you at all and yeah, just have an amazing day everyone.